We're going to talk about orthogonal collocation on finite elements, in particular how to use this to solve differential equations. So for example, if I have dx dt equals f of x, that's a perhaps a nonlinear differential equation. And if you remember, just first of all, you know, discretization method that you may be familiar with is Euler's method. And in Euler's method, we have uh, two points, our initial condition that we know, and then our final condition, which is x1. And we just do a finite difference approximation for our derivative. So dx dt equals approximately uh, x1 minus x0 divided by the delta time. Okay, there's the change in time right there. Okay, and from this we can uh, solve the differential equation by just putting our right-hand side of the equation back there and then have x1 equals uh, delta t times f of x plus x0. So that's how we determine x1. So this is the, probably the, the most simple discretization method called Euler's. And uh, we can also do a, you know, this, this would be, you know, one of the simplest there. Okay, that's just with two nodes. Now, another way to do this is through a orthogonal collocation on finite elements. And what we're doing is we have higher order or more accurate methods. And we have more points. So let's just go up to three, where we have x0, x1, and x2. And then we use a polynomial to fit this. So I'm going to just have a polynomial, which is x of t equals a plus, and then you have to have the same number of uh, order of polynomial as you do points. Okay, so there's my x of t. And then if I have these three points, I'm going to essentially use this polynomial to come up with the derivatives. So if I have derivatives at x1, I can just take my dx1 um, dt is going to be equal to, and I take the derivative of that, which is going to be b plus 2ct. Okay, and that would become my derivative approximation that I would use right here. And solve the equation right here, dx1 dt equals f of x1. And then I have another one right here that I need to solve, which is dx2 dt equals f of x2. Okay, so I have essentially four variables and four unknowns. I have dx1 dt, I have x1, I have dx2 dt, and I have x2. Okay, so I have uh, this equation. That's equation number one. Here's equation number two. And then I had equation number three. And then I would have equation, okay, number four as well. Then we're going to rearrange this a little bit so that we can not have these higher order polynomials for, um, so we're going to go through the derivation of how to implement this more efficiently. But essentially what we're doing is instead of the linear approximation that Euler's method gives us, we're going to do some higher order uh, methods to be able to approximate our solution that are going to be more accurate. Okay, so um, Let's just go ahead and start. I'm going to start with a uh, fourth order, okay? Um, let's just say I had x uh, of t equals a plus uh, b t plus uh, b t plus c times t squared plus d times t to the third. And the points that I have are x naught, x1, x2, and x3. So there are my points right there that I'm going to try to obtain a solution to. Okay, so um, the very first thing that I'll need to do is go ahead and just, like I did with, uh, you know, these four variables, four equations right here, I'm going to go ahead and put this into a matrix form. And uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just do x, 
one dot, that's the derivative of x, x two dot, x three dot, okay, equals an M matrix, and you'll see where this comes in in just a little bit. I'll have x1, x2, and x3, and then I'll subtract the initial condition. Okay, so I'm going to put it in this form right here, and then I'm going to take this polynomial right here and take the derivative, okay, for each one, and so I'll have x1 dot equals b plus 2ct plus 3dt squared. Okay, and that's going to be at time 1. And then I have the next one, which is b plus 2ct2 plus 3dt2 squared. And then the final one. Okay, and just finishing that off. Okay, and then I'm going to substitute this, these, right in there. And I'm also going to substitute these right in here because I know that x1, okay, I know it's no longer a function of time. I'm going to evaluate that at a particular point. Okay, so x of t1, okay, which is going to be x1, is going to be equal to and then that's just going to be a plus b t1 plus c t1 squared plus d t1 cubed. Okay, I'm going to do that for all of them. And then we'll substitute those in, and then we come up with something that uh, can factor out. Now I'm going to, I don't want to skip a step here, so let me just go kind of painfully slow with a lot of detail here. Let's just go ahead and write this all out. Okay, I'm going to do B, okay, the very first one, plus 3D T1 squared, B plus 2CT2 plus 3D T2 squared, plus B plus 2CT3 uh, plus 3D T3 squared. Okay, and that's going to be on the left-hand side. And then I'm going to have this mat, this M matrix right there, and then I want to have my uh, other points that are going to be in there. This one is going to be, um, you know, the M matrix, which is, and then multiplied by. Um, okay, so let's let's just do this. I'm going to do uh, write this out. That's going to be A plus B T one plus C T. 1 squared plus d t cubed, okay, a plus b t 2 plus c t 2 squared plus d t uh, 2, I'll put the 1 there, cubed, okay, and then the final one. Now I'm, I'm getting my subscripts mixed up here. Let me go just correct that. Okay, and then I have minus my x naught. Now, if I just select a um, equals x naught equals a, then I'll just subtract a from all of those. Okay, and then okay, so this is the this is kind of the point where a lot of um, you know a lot of students get confused. We're going to factor out um, a b, c, and d. Okay. So what I'll do is go ahead and just factor those out. So this is equivalent to 1 plus 2C, oh, I don't need the C there, T1 plus 3T1 squared, okay? 1 plus 2T2 plus 3T2 squared, okay? And this is going to be multiplied by B, C, and D. And then 1 plus 2t3 plus 3t3 squared equals, and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll have m times, and now I'll just have the t1 um, plus uh, c. I don't need the c there anymore. I'll factor that out. t1 squared plus 
t1 cubed, okay? And that's going to be multiplied by b, c, and d. And I'll do the same thing here. Okay, now the nice thing is I have the B, C, and D right here, so I know that this one is going to be equal to that one. Okay, um, so just like I have two matrices, if I had a matrix A times X plus B times X, uh, I'll do an equal sign there, um, then I would know that A and B matrices are the same. Okay, so I have uh, just these two left-hand sides that I'm going to equate to each other, and then from that I can get the M matrix. Okay, so now I have M equals, and then let's just go ahead and write this out. I'm going to uh, take the inverse of the uh, right-hand side, 2T1 plus 3T1 squared, and... Okay. Okay, I don't need the pluses here. These are not added together. Okay, 3t3 squared. Okay, I didn't need the pluses here either or here. Okay, these are individual elements of a matrix. Okay, um, and then I have uh, T1, T1 squared, T1 cubed, T2, T2 squared, T2 uh, cubed, T3, T3 squared, T3 cubed. Okay, and that is an inverse. So now I've just derived my M matrix. And that M matrix goes right in here to relate our derivatives to our non-derivative values. So let's just become additional equations in our, um, essentially in our, in our optimization problem. Okay, and now sometimes we don't want to have it this way because, and, and so this assumes uh, going zero to a time of one, but if we have, um, you know, if, if we have a different amount of time that we're going to go to, we're going to put a final time right here, okay? And that goes from zero to final time now instead of zero to one. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and just take the inverse, okay, the inverse of the M matrix, and that is going to be equal to N, okay? So where N, I'm going to just rewrite this a little bit differently. I'm going to have TN times n, and x1 dot, x2 dot, and x3 dot equals x1, x2, and x3 minus x0 for all of those. Okay, so we're going to have uh, this, and the nice thing about this is if tn goes to zero, if this time steps become very, very small, Okay, if it approaches zero, then I just have equality constraints that basically just say, um, you know, my x1 equals x0, my x2 equals x0, and my x3 equals x0 if um, tn goes to zero. Whereas if you have it the other way, if you have it on the right-hand side, then as tn goes to zero, there's a term that goes to infinity. So. Uh, doesn't work as well for, you know, these solvers that, um, you know, with very small time steps because you have very uh, large, uh, you have basically a very large term there that you've got to try to solve. Okay, so we put it in, in this form, um, and then these N matrices have been derived for, you know, two up to six um, in the AP monitor paper, but you know, that you can go higher order as well. What I typically do though, you know, I, if I need more accuracy, I don't have a higher order method, I just have more segments. So for example, 
let's say I had uh, you know these four points the one that we just derived then I just put another one that attaches to it okay and I make these two equal and I have two fourth order polynomials that approximate these different segments and then as I need more uh, time steps I can just add more uh, fourth order polynomials as I go out okay so you can add also more time steps that are each approximated by a polynomial if you want to. Okay, so that's the, that's the derivation. Let's just do a, a quick example. Okay, so there's, there's an example uh, solution by orthogonal collocation. So if you come to uh, you know, this web address here, you'll see uh, you know, just a very, uh, an introductory problem right there. And then you have an exercise number one with the solution there and the source code. Okay, so you can look at the Python source code right there. You see your and matrices that are already typed in there for you. Um, and okay, and it, so it sets it up. You got the different time points. Uh, one thing I, I forgot to mention is you know, these are not uh, evenly spaced time points, but those come from uh, this Lobato uh, quadrature that we're going to use to give us the optimal spacing, okay, between these time points. Um, and so that's why it's called orthogonal, you know, these orthogonal polynomials, this orthogonal collocation on finite elements. Okay, so that's the derivation, uh, you know, for a fourth order I also showed you how to do it for a uh, you know basically a first order and uh, or a, a, you know this one that you know is like the Euler's method um, basically just a, a linear okay the one that you're probably familiar with but you can go with higher order methods as well and uh, basically at the end of the day what we're doing is we're taking uh, something that looks like this, okay, and if we had semi-explicit form, and we're translating that into another function that's just a function of algebraic variables. And the reason why we need to do that is because we need to solve this with uh, nonlinear optimizers. So, for example, minimize uh, j of x, um, changing x values subject to uh, differential, uh, you, know, you could have a differential equation here, um, or you could have, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to translate this into something that nonlinear optimizers can handle, okay? So it cannot, nonlinear optimizers don't know what to do with differential equations, so we're essentially discretizing them in order to get um, something that is an algebraic representation. Okay, so additional information on this, if you need uh, more help on this, there are some references down below. Here's the one that's the AP Monitor uh, paper. Okay, you can go with Science Direct or you can go with uh, ResearchGate. Uh, both of those will give you uh, links to download the uh, PDF and then you can uh, take a look at uh, okay, you can take a look at, um, you know, the, a little bit more detail in, in a peer-reviewed paper.